Hello all, welcome to the Windows API exploitation recipes for red blue teams on Pentester Academy. Now we will continue with the process listing API and in this video we will look at enum process which is part of the PS API uh, set of APIs which basically are process status APIs. Okay, enum process. So let's look at this. Now enum processes, sorry, uh, basically gives back the list of process IDs running on the system, right? That's it, uh, which seems to be extremely limiting, uh, you know, at first glance. And it is, which because what we would have to do is after we get back the process IDs, we would have to call further APIs to know more about that process, right? So typically we call enum process, we get the list of process IDs, and then for each of the process IDs, we would end up having to call open process, right? By providing the process ID. And then this would give us a handle to the process and then we might be able to use that handle in other APIs and get more interesting info. Now let's look at the code. So here we have it, right, enum processes. We basically pass in uh, PIDs which get populated, again the actual syntax and you know what is what and whether this is a pointer or a pointer to a pointer or so on and so forth i'm going to leave it to you to look at the documentation right this isn't a c programming course uh, i'm just going to take up the more important parts here right so enum process is going to go ahead fill in all the pids currently in the system and give it back to us now what we would have to do then is for each of these PIDs call open process to get a handle to that process. And if you notice what we've done is uh, the kind of requested desired access is set to query limited information. This ensures that uh, hopefully we might not require too high a privilege, right? And once we get the process handle, we end up calling get process image file name to go ahead and get the entire path of the exe which is currently running in the process. And that's it, that's all we do. Now the question of course arises, do we require privileges, right? So let me actually first block out this entire section where I'm going to, actually you know what, I don't need to do that. Uh, I call enable uh, debug privileges, right? Where we do the SE debug privilege. If that is enabled, we say enabled. If not, we say it was not enabled and continue. So let me go ahead, run this program first. So I'm compiling it. And first let me run this using a regular user prompt, right? There is no elevation. This is not an admin prompt. There we go. So let me hit enter. Now we see at the very bottom that for a lot of process IDs, we seem to be able to find the actual path on disk for the exe which got loaded. But if we scroll up, we see that a major number of processes in the top here uh, seems like we are getting an access is denied, right? Of course, this is happening in open process itself because we don't have enough privileges, right? So let's go ahead and launch this from a privilege prompt. So you can clearly see, uh, you know, enum process itself is not a privileged operation. We get the PIDs, but hey, <laughs> those are just numbers. What do we do with them, right? So to get more interesting information, such as the path, we require more privileges. Now, again, keep in mind, guys, the, the base API, such as enum process or whatever we have seen till now, itself might not require a huge number of privileges, 
what would decide uh, the privilege is what we want to know about the process and what we would like to eventually do with the process, right? Do we want to read process memory? Do we want to write process memory? Do we want to be able to debug the process, right? So many things. Those decide generally the privilege. Uh, the base APIs such as enum process, they would work without requiring high privileges. Okay, so now we have a privileged prompt. And there we go. Now we can clearly see that we were able to get a ton of information, right? Pretty much for everything. Now we still see uh, two errors over here, which is, you know, even though it says operation completed successfully, we didn't get anything here. Same goes for here as well, right? Why is this there? Uh, let's actually open up Process Explorer to understand what these processes really are. Okay, let's see if I can increase the font size a bit. There we go. Let's sort by PID, just makes it easy to work with this. Okay, now let's look at which processes are in question. So clearly PID 4, we couldn't get the image file on disk. So what is PID 4 over here? So PID 4 is the system process. Now the truth is, uh, this is really pretty much a placeholder for the system or your operating system. So if I double click on this, if you notice even process explorer doesn't really give us a path. There is really no single executable running this. Uh, so what is really running here? So if we go ahead and open up the lower pane and we switch the view to view DLLs. Now what we would find is with the system process selected, you find that what is really running inside there is a lot of sys files. What are these device drivers? right? Uh, you find DLLs running inside of it. Let's actually sort it, right? So you find DLLs running, you find sys files running in here. Uh, and if we actually So if you notice HAL.dll, right? The HAL layer, hardware abstraction, that is running in here. Really, I mean, this is pretty much everything which is there in your operating system, right? Uh, another extremely interesting thing which you would see here is of course, Entos kernel, right? This is really your NT kernel. So the fact is there is no system image file. This is really a collection of device drivers, DLL, the the kernel itself and all of that which is running in system space, right? And of course, hence, uh, we cannot get an image file. So that explains number four. Now if we go to 2248, right? This is the other one. So what is this? Keep in mind guys, whenever you fail to get something, it is very important to look at the process and understand why the API failed right? The why is very important and especially the why is when you fail, not the why is when you succeed. Let's go down here. Okay. So we see this is something called memory compression, right? Some Something is going on and it says a device attached to the system is not functioning properly running as system, right? Uh, so we can clearly once again see there is really no image file associated, right? And that is the reason why in this case as well, we see that get process image file name uh, seems to basically not return anything uh, which we could use, right? Cool. So apart from that, as we can clearly see, we have found out the file name on disk for every other process running on the system. Brilliant. Now, 
let's go back to the slides. So just to uh, you know quickly go ahead and reiterate, enum process gives us a list of PIDs. Uh, of course, just with those PIDs, we aren't going to get anywhere. So we use open process for each of those PIDs, get a handle so that we can get some minimal information about it. Uh, of course, we need to be running from elevation with SE debug privilege or rather with SE debug privilege to able to find more interesting things about these processes. And uh, once we have the requisite privileges, we can go ahead and uh, figure out the exe the process was loaded from. And that's it. So, of course, as you can clearly see, our good old friend tool help snapshot uh, seem to be a much more silent option, right? Uh, we aren't getting anywhere much here without going ahead and uh, actually requiring more privileges. Now, keep in mind that when you used create tool help 32 snapshot, we got the exe file name from there to get to the actual path could lead to interesting requirements. I, I leave that as an exercise to you. Uh, the other thing is that typically when you call things like open process uh, and for that matter, you know, many of the APIs which we are discussing, these could be red flags to, you know, tools which might do a very simple uh, static analysis on the PE by looking at the imports. Uh, or for a malware engineer or for, you know, uh, you know, some kind of an automated evaluation solution. So most advanced adversaries would try and obfuscate the API calls that their binaries are making, right? Now we will take up API call obfuscation later on in detail. And then we would, you know, where we would learn more about load library, get proc address and the different techniques, uh, you know, adversaries and malware use and how we could use that for our red teaming exercises. So just keep that in mind, right? All these APIs are nice and beautiful, but most of the times eventually, uh, if you use them in a certain combination, uh, that does raise red flags. Okay guys, that's all I had in mind for this video. If you're enjoying your time on Pentester Academy, please recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.